In setting up your DJI FPV, you will utilize this joystick control button. This button has multiple functions, as well as getting into the menu. If you press the button forward or backwards, it's going to adjust the volume on the headset if you had one plugged into the goggles. The other function it'll do, which is a quick function, is pressing it right or left, which will adjust the brightness or darkness of the goggles themselves. The main thing you're going to do is press the button down, which is going to get you into the main menu. On the main menu, displayed on the left side of the goggles, is status. You'll rarely have to go here, but if you do, this is the place where your error messages are going to be displayed. The next thing we have are albums. The albums display the captured video or still shots that are stored within the SD card on the goggles and you can preview them. It's a good idea to have an SD card in the goggles. The next thing is transmission. Under transmission we have pilot and we have audience. The pilot can decide whether to broadcast the video signal. Unlike analog goggles, you can decide whether you want it to display or not. Aspect ratio would be your 16 by 9 or 4.3. I've chosen the 16 by 9 for a wider view. The next is focus mode, which really isn't focus as we think of focus. It's actually if the digital image is broken up from the craft, do you want the screen to display a higher pixel rate towards the center or the whole screen not to be as clear? I have it set on auto, which is going to constantly sense the amount of image data that's coming into the goggles. Next up we have channel mode. I have this set to auto. If you put it in manual you can either choose 2.4 or 5.8. It's best to let it decide based on outside interference. Now let's move to settings. Under safety we have the maximum flight altitude I have mine set at 328 feet. We have the max flight distance, which I've set to no limit. The next we have is the return home altitude. Now you want to make sure you set this above any obstacles in your flying area. And this is from the takeoff point. So you want to make sure it's high enough, but I like to keep it as low as I possibly can for safety sake. The next item is update home point. And the reason you might want to do that, let's say if you're flying from a moving object like a boat or something, as you're flying, you don't want the home point to be where you took off because you may not have enough battery to get back there if you lose image transmission or transmitter. The next item is obstacle slowing. This is only active in normal mode. I have it turned on, so if I am flying in normal mode, it flies more like a Mavic or other craft. The next item is compass calibration. This is an automatic routine and then you follow the on-screen prompts if you need to reset the compass. IMU calibration is the flight controller on the, the quad. This is rare you'd have to do it, but it's fairly straightforward. Just follow the prompts on the screen. Find my drone is a neat feature. What it actually does is it uh, plays the last video that was captured on the SD card to help locate your quad. Now, this is just something that would be quick if you're flying on the field and your drone goes down. The other thing you can do is plug in your cell phone to the DJI Fly app and then this plugs into the goggles and then it will display your drone's location on the map on the DJI Fly app. The next thing we have is advanced safety settings and at aircraft signal loss, what do you want it to do? Hover, land, or return home? Most people want it to return home and it does work very well. Air sensing is the ability for it to recognize other manned aircrafts in your flying area. It will display a message on the screen. If the aircraft gets closer, the message will actually turn red, notifying you that it's, it's in the close proximity and you may have to take evasive actions. Emergency propeller stop gives you the ability to do the same routine as starting the propellers in normal or sport mode, but do it while the quad is flying to allow it to fall to earth so you can buy a new one. Next up, we have the control menu. This is where you actually are setting up the quad. 
The first thing is your button customization. I've left it all at defaults except for the C1 button double press. I've set the turtle mode. Turtle mode gives you the ability to upright the quad if you were to crash and it was upside down or laying on its side. It's actually a really neat routine the way they've done it. The next thing we have is stick mode. It defaults to stick mode 2, which is normal for North America. Mode 1 is for most of the Asian countries. These are my uh, gains and expos. I've left the center stick sensitivity the same. As you see, my max rates I've increased and my expo I've set to zero. The M mode attitude limit is something that you're going to want to turn off, but you won't be able to turn it off until you've done one M mode flight. The last menu is RC calibration, and what this is designed to do is to calibrate the throws of the transmitter, your throttle, yaw, pitch, and roll. And this is not a bad idea to do. Uh, you just click start and follow the on-screen prompts. You're essentially just moving the sticks right, left, up, and down, and it remembers the maximum travel position. Next, we kind of have the fun things. We've got the head LEDs. Now, the reason you might want to turn these on if you're doing videography at uh, dusk hour, you might not want the red amber glow in the video itself. These are pretty cool. The arm LED color, I've got mine set to yellow. You can pick all sorts of different colors. The next thing down is you can do the LED pattern. I've set it to a wave because uh, it reminds me of Knight Rider. It's not a bad thing. The arm LED brightness, I have set to five. The gimbal pitch speed, I have set to normal, and it seems to react just fine, uh, even in sport mode. Next, we have gimbal calibration, which is automated. Just make sure your drone's on a level surface and press start. The next we have is coordinated turn S mode, and this only works in S mode. The quad actually banks right or left when you give it yaw automatically. And do you want a large roll angle, small roll angle, or disable it so it's corners flat like a Mavic or something like that? This is also configurable through the C1 button, and that's what it is as a default. When you're in sport mode, you can press the C1 button, and on the on screen display, it will show you um, large roll angle, small roll angle, or disabled. So it's actually very intuitive and easy to use, so don't worry about this in the main menu here. Now we have units. Do you want it to read in meters or do you want it to read in feet? I have mine set to imperial so it reads feet. Now let's move on to camera settings. This is where you're gonna change the whether you're in auto mode or manual mode, your ISO, your shutter speed and all that. Uh, once the market gets saturated and we have ND filters, this will be handy to have. Transmission quality, do you want it to be high or low latency? I have it on high and haven't had any issues. Video quality is the size of your video. I have mine as you see at 1080, all of it is 60 frames per second. Video format, which was the type of file, MOV or MP4. Grid lines, uh, I on the fence on this, I've turned them on. It does help some, but it's really not a photographing drone. Center point I have turned on. And the last thing here is for formatting the card on the aircraft or on the goggles. Now advanced camera settings. Do you want the drone to record on the SD card on the craft or on the goggles or both? I have it set to both. Auto record at takeoff. I don't have this on. I like to press the button to record when I want to. Electronic image stabilization I have turned on. Next thing is distortion correction. And I found if you turn this on on the goggles as well as on the craft, you don't get the propellers in the shot. And you can see here in the background as it changes, it does change the perspective quite a lot. The other thing is in post, you don't have to put a lens correction on it. So it's already ready to go into your post-processing software, which is nice. So I've elected to turn it on on both, and it also narrows the field of vision, which I feel makes it a little easier to fly. Now we have image roll correction, and if you watch the background here, I turn it on, see how it crops the image even more, and this would be for your roll axis, which I don't have it turned on because flying the craft in manual mode 
you can't really see the attitude of it and you can get yourself in trouble real quick if it's on. It will be a good tool to have for normal and sport mode. Video coding format, you can set it to your preference. Under color, we've got normal and desyn like and I will be changing this to desyn like so I can do my post-processing color correction. Anti-flicker I have set to 60 hertz because we're in North America. Audio recording is a neat feature. I like that because in some videos that helps to add drama, so to speak, to your video. I'll put a clip at the end here with the audio on. Now we have reset camera parameters, which will undo everything that you've changed. Let's move on to display settings. Remember, from the joystick on the outside of the goggles, you can change the brightness by pressing it to the right or to the left. Next thing we have is zoom in and out. I would think this would be handy for somebody who doesn't have really good peripheral vision that you could narrow the screen, maybe help you concentrate a little bit. For me, I like it at 100%. Last thing you have here is the home point. And what that's for, there's a moving H on the screen while you're flying that points you in the direction of home. I got in trouble a little bit with a regular quad last weekend where I was flying in an area I wasn't familiar with and kind of got lost, but luckily had enough battery to get back. The last thing we have here is the about. So if you want to check the software version that you have or firmware version, you can look in there and compare it to the DJI website. Hopefully this video has been informative to you and gotten you used to the on-screen displays with the DJI FPV Quad. I've been really pleased with mine so far and I'm looking forward to future software updates as well as new products that they're coming out with. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and happy flying.